Welcome back. So now we have an overview of what's going to happen. Let's try and now install Firebase function so we can start getting all of this mess cleaned up, right? And start letting the bag and do some more of the heavy work, right? So how do we do that? Well, the cool thing is if you go into your console for your project, for your Firebase project, you have authentication, database, storage. We already played around with these two. And then you have hosting, also played around with that, but then you have something called functions. And this is where you need to go. So I'll press the functions right here and you'll see something. If you've not been in here before, you'll see a status guide. I'll say get started, boink, and it'll pop up and say you need to install the Firebase tools. Now if you already used my last videos where we kind of installed the Firebase tools before, you don't have to do this, but if you want to, you can just run the, the command again and it'll just try and get uh, it installed if it doesn't already exist. So it's not going to break anything. Sweet, so now the Firebase tools are there. How do we actually start using Firebase functions? Now we have to start out by calling Firebase init. And if you guys remember, if you've already tried to do the hosting, you do the same command for hosting. So let's just try and trigger this guy, Firebase init. I'll jump back here, Firebase tools are installed, so I can now call Firebase init. I'll execute that guy, and now you'll see it asks me, which, what do you want to init? Do you want to init database, Firestore, functions? Oh yeah, I want to init functions. I'll press space right here, poof, and it's now selected. Now it's very important you select the specific one you want to initialize right here. Don't end up just selecting all of them because you'll get a lot of messy files. You don't know what they are. Just select functions right here, press space and press enter. There we go. Now it asks me, do you want to use JavaScript, that's ECMAScript, or do you want to use TypeScript? Now in my case, I'm going to use TypeScript just because I'm a fan of TypeScript, but you can easily use JavaScript. And I do know a lot of examples out there are actually written in JavaScript. So it's really up to you, but TypeScript in my mind is just easy to use and I'm going to pick that one. I'll present it right here. And now it asks, do you want to install TS Lint? And yes, you want to do that because that'll help you out with errors. It'll help you make better code. It'll help you give advice to your code. It'll also be sometimes annoying that you can't quite find what's going on, but TS Lint will try to help you not try and destroy your code. So yes, I would really encourage you to say yes to this and put in TS Lint. That's also the default choice, by the way. Do you want to install dependencies with APN? That's pretty much just Yes, because we just want to get the dependencies to get this project up and running. It created all these files for us now. Now it has to kind of use the package.json file to go and get a lot of packages that we need to run our functions code. So that was it. That was what we had to do. Now this will take a bit of time, so I'll just pause the video, be right back. So the installation is complete and uh, we can now actually start using functions. But what did it actually do for us? Let's just try and have a look over here inside the code. It actually created a new a new library for you right here, or a new um, folder called functions. And under that folder, notice there's it, it, it's its own small Node.js project. It's its own small project. It has nothing to do with the Angular project actually. And what that means is you could take this function and put it into a completely different folder if you wanted to. It's a self-running project. Now I'll keep it in our current setup right here, just because I wanted to, to show you guys that it belongs to this. But again, you have to go in here to run some specific commands. There are some things that you might want to have to go into this specific folder that might confuse you. And then you can actually, if you want to, move it into its own complete folder system, its own GitHub repo, everything if you want to. But you don't have to. Now notice there's a package.json file in here now that explains what we need and what commands we can run for our functions project. But there's also still a package.json file that belongs to our Angular project. So you just have to be aware you don't go into the wrong file if you want to kind of go in and, and do something manually in any of these files. There's the package.json here now for the functions and there's a package.json here for the actual Angular project. Very important again that you understand that. Now the final thing we get is a git ignore file, makes sense, some node modules that was just installed with npm install, and then the final file is this guy right here. Let's just open that, the index.ts file. Now this guy contains nothing yet, but next lesson we'll try and use this file to make our first Firebase function run on our cloud Firestore. That's it for this lesson, see you next time, have fun.